All right, everybody. Welcome to our first virtual um, video where you guys will be introduced to algebra. You've probably been introduced to algebra before, but just uh, kind of starting over fresh. So let's go ahead and get into section 1.1 about variables and expressions. So what's the difference between algebra and any other kind of math? You know, people, uh, you know, there's calculus, there's geometry, algebra, arithmetic. What's the difference between arithmetic and algebra? Well, we'll go ahead and start with some vocabulary here, just so you guys understand the basics of what we're talking about. And the first thing I want to talk about is a variable. That is the one thing that makes algebra different than any other uh, branch of mathematics, is because it introduces the concept of a variable, something that we don't even know what it is, but we'll put a letter there as its place. So let's start off with the technical definition of variable. It's a symbol, usually a letter, that represents one or more numbers. All right? So let's talk about an algebraic expression. An algebraic expression is a mathematical phrase that includes one or more variables. So let's take a look at some things that are mathematical expressions. So here you can see we've got 2x minus 9, 8 minus y, uh, 100, and then the parentheses there, that means we're multiplying the 100 times the whole thing. So 100 times the quantity a plus 8. Uh, here, this is all one big term, 32xy squared z. So notice all four of those expressions have a letter in them. So that's what makes them algebraic expressions. Now let's compare that to a numeric expression. A numeric expression is a mathematical phrase involving numbers and operation symbols, but no variables. So as soon as you see that variable in there, you know you're talking algebraic. If there's no letter, it's numeric. So let's see a few examples here. Now you may have seen problems like this before in other math classes. Uh, you might be thinking of order of operations, which we'll get to. But yeah, these are all numbers and operation symbols, but no letters. So those are numeric expressions. So some additional vocabulary that you may need to know is, uh, we talked about the operation symbols, the plus, minus, add, subtract. What words mean those things? So here's some addition vocabulary. All these words mean to add. So anytime that we're coming across a word problem and uh, we see any of these words, we should automatically know in our minds, okay, I'm doing some adding here. So add, sum, plus, increase, total, in addition to, and. And does not always mean to add. Okay, If I say the difference between 5 and 7, well, difference means subtract. But if I'm subtracting two things, I say 5 and 7. That and does not always mean to add. But if I said I've got uh, two buckets of apples, 5 and 7, then, of course, we're going to add those. So when you see the word and, it doesn't always mean to add. More than, combined, together, all those mean to add. So let's move on to some other vocabulary words for subtraction. Take a look at this list. Subtract, minus, less, less than, difference, decrease, take away, deduct, diminish. Um, this isn't a full list. There's other words that mean to, to subtract as well. Um, but this is just a, a, a good list to start off with. Now, notice the words less and less than have a little uh, star next to them. That's because those are a little bit tricky. Okay, So kind of keep that in the back of your mind. When you see the phrase less or less than, something skews going on. All right, We'll talk about what that means in just a second. But just recognize those phrases as being something a little off. Some multiplication vocabulary. Product, that's a good word to know. Uh, times per, for each, and for every. Good stuff to know. Division. So dividend, quotient. Oh, that's not dividend. <laughs> that's divided. Math teacher can't read. OK, it's divided, <laughs> quotient. Split, each, cut, equal pieces, out of, shared. All good words. The main ones I would focus on here would be uh, quotient or each. All right? 
So let's talk about writing algebraic expressions. You're going to be expected to take a situation that's uh, fully in words and be able to uh, translate it into uh, a mathematical phrase, okay, an algebraic expression. So let's take the phrase here, the sum of a number in 12. So some key words right there, sum. If we remember back to our vocabulary, sum means to add. So this tells me I'm going to add some number. I don't know what that number is, so I'll just give it a letter. Some number and 12. So one way of writing that would be x plus 12. Okay, we frequently use the letter x, but it's not always the letter x. So if this were a question on a test or a quiz, I'd accept any letter there. Some letter plus 12. 7 in addition to 5 times a number. So this tells me I'm going to take 7 and I'm going to add it to 5 times a number. So like 5x or b. 7 plus 5b. The quotient, ooh, that's one of those tricky ones. The quotient, that means I'm going to divide two things. And any time that we have a uh, division, I want you to not use the little uh, uh, line with the dot above and the di dot below, okay? Don't use that division symbol. Just write it as a fraction. Matter of fact, that's how we got that little division symbol is because there's the fraction line in your numerator and your denominator. So anytime we divide, it's actually a fraction. So dividing 6 and a number. So 6 divided by P. All right, this next one's a little bit tricky. 18 less than triple a number. So if you recall, uh, I told you the phrase less and less than were a little bit tricky, okay? So here's why it's a little bit tricky. If I say that I've got 18 less than 19, well, 18 less than 19, that's only one. Well, how did I get that? I took 19 minus 18. Notice I didn't start off with the 18. It was 19 minus 18, okay? If I've got 18 less than 100, that means I take 100 and I subtract 18. So if I say 18 less than triple a number, that means I'm going to put triple the number first and then subtract 18. So make that connection in your head. When you see the phrase less or less than, you're going to switch the order up. Okay? That 18, yes, it comes first in the word phrase, but it does not come first in the number phrase. Okay? Next one is also a tricky one. It says five times the difference of a number and nine. So let's analyze this. Five times. Okay, that's pretty easy. That's a multiplication. So five times something. What is the something? Well, it doesn't give me another something. It says five times the difference. Well, the difference, as you know, is a subtraction problem. So the difference of a number and nine. So that's just going to be a letter minus nine. But then I have to do five times that whole thing. So this is what it's going to look like. 5 times g minus 9. Because I'm doing 5 times the difference. I'm doing 5 times the whole thing. So I put that g minus 9 in parentheses to indicate I'm multiplying the whole thing. All right? So be on the lookout for that. If you see like 5 times the sum or 5 times the difference, all right, you're going to be using parentheses. <laughs> Not sure why that is in there yet. Uh, let's try writing some algebraic phrases. So let's do the flip-flop of what we just did. What if I give you an algebraic uh, expression? Can you put words to it? So 3x minus 9. Lots of ways you can do this. Triple a number minus 9. That works. Uh, 9 less than. Ah, there's that phrase less than. So notice the order got flip-flopped. The 9 comes last in the algebraic expression, but when I use the phrase less than, i got to flip-flop that order. So 9 less than the product of 3 and a number. The difference, that's a subtraction, so the difference of 3 times a number and 9. All three of these ways are good ways of describing this algebraic expression, so there's not one right way to do this. All right, let's move on to this fraction here, x plus 5 over 12. Since it's a fraction, quotient is a great word to use. So the quotient of 
a number plus five and 12. Okay, so whenever I say quotient, I'm looking to divide two different things. I've got to have a numerator and a denominator. So that word and separates the numerator from the denominator. So a number plus eight is your numerator. And then 12 is your denominator. Uh, the sum of a number in five divided by 12. That's yet another way of writing it. Both good ways. Story problems, everyone's favorite. Okay, I can't tell you how much people love story problems. Like we get to story problems and they're like, yay, story problems. Is that you, right? No, probably not. So I want you to write an algebraic expression for the following situation. You and your friends are going to a concert. Tickets are $12 a piece. And parking is for your one vehicle is $5. How much is this event going to cost? All right, so story problem steps. Do these steps anytime you see a story problem. Because I have so many people say uh, when they get to a story problem, they just, I don't get it. Well, did you read the problem? No, I just don't get it. So story problems are nothing to fear. Step one, read the problem. Okay, don't try to understand it all at once. Just read through it and see what information stands out to you. But step one is always read the problem. Once you've read the problem, ask yourself, what is it that I'm trying to find? What's the unknown? What am I trying to figure out? Go back through, reread it, find out what information is important. Sometimes they give you some non-important information, and you've got to kind of filter out what's important and what's not important. And the last thing we're going to do here is write the expression. So let's do an example of this. So you and your friends are going to a concert. Tickets are $12 per person, and parking for your one vehicle is $5. How much is this event going to cost? So we read it. <coughs> Excuse me. All right. So uh, identify the question. What is it that we're trying to find? Okay. How much is this event going to cost? Um, okay. Well, what do we not know here? We don't know how many people are going because how much this event is going to cost is going to totally depend on how many people are going. If it's just you, you're going to pay your $12 ticket and then $5 for parking, $17. But if you've got other friends going, that changes the price. So now that we know what we're looking for, okay, we're looking for um, how many people are going, uh, let's define that variable. Let's do something easy. Let's represent the number of people by the letter P. Okay. So we read the problem, we found out what the unknown is, the number of people. So now let's read through it again and let's find any important information. So let's look for some key words here. You and your friends are going to a concert. Tickets are $12 per person. That's a key nugget of information. And parking is an additional $5. Okay, Additional, that's one of our vocabulary words there. So that's important too. Okay, so those two things are going to help me write the expression for what's going on here. So if it's $12 per person, per, if you remember, that's one of our vocabulary words that means to multiply. So since the number of people was the letter P, $12 per person literally translates into 12 times P. So 12P, plus there's an additional $5, so plus 5. So that's the expression for how much this event is going to cost, 12P plus 5. All right? So that's a basic rundown of our very first uh, lesson here. Hope you guys followed it all right. Uh, hope you guys did all right answering the questions. Uh, feel free to go back and rewatch this and uh, um, make sure you really understand the content. Hopefully it's nice and easy. Uh, I like to start off the year that way. So if you guys have any questions, please feel free to email me. Um, Ask questions in class tomorrow, and uh, let's get this year started off with a bang, all right? Hope you guys have a good one.